what is referred to as the golden age of Islam, the subject today I want to discuss is mathematics, which between the 8th and 12th century flourished in the Islamic world. During this period, Arabic was the language of international science and mathematics over a region stretching from India to Spain. After the foundation of Baghdad in the year 762, a massive program of translation was started in which great works of India, Persia and Greece were translated into Arabic. Baghdad became the centre of enlightenment, culture and learning, with the House of Wisdom established by Caliph al maymun playing a role similar to the earlier Library of Alexandria. One of the first contributions that Muslim mathematicians made was the adoption and popularization of the Indian numeral system. The Muslims recognized the power and efficiency compared to the Roman numeral system. One of the greatest mathematicians of the Islamic Golden Age was the Persian Muhammad al khwarizmi He worked in the House of Wisdom from the year 820 where he wrote several important astronomical and mathematical texts. His work would later be translated into Latin. The decimal system of numbers was popularized in Europe by Leonardo of Pisa, also known as Fibonacci. The basis of algebra was founded by al khwarizmi The word algebra derives from the Islamic word Al-Jabra, which literally translates in English as the reunion of broken parts. al khwarizmi discusses linear and quadratic equations. He developed methods for manipulating and simplifying algebraic expressions, which you may have encountered in school. Another method for solving quadratic equations is the method he introduced called completing the square. Of course, he did not call the method completing the square but he explains how you can solve equations using this method. I'll give you an example of how to use the complete in the square method. Let's say I want to solve the equation x squared plus 10x equals 39. So you have the x squared represented as a square, the 10x represented as a rectangle, and it's all equal to 39. First, I am going to split the rectangle in half, so I will have two 5x rectangles. Now I am going to attach the two rectangles to the square, making an L shape. Now to make this L shape a square, we will have to add a smaller square. The smaller square will be 5 by 5, so 25. Now if I was to write this out, I would have x plus 5 all squared minus 25 equals 64. Now all that is required is some simple algebraic manipulation and you will get the answer x equals 3. It is interesting to know that when you find the square root of 64 you get positive and negative 8 but during al khwarizmis time there was no conception of negative numbers. There is so much more we can talk about for example the outstanding mathematician Abu al-Wafa al-Buzjani with his work on geometry, he was the first to study trigonometric identity systematically. He invented many of these like the famous sine rule. The sine rule is an equation that helps us find the missing side length or angles of any triangle. Another great mathematician in the 10th century was Ibrahim ibn Sinan, who continued Archimedes' investigation on areas, volumes, as well as on tangents of a circle to a whole new level. And the final mathematician I will talk about quickly is Omar Khayyam, who was also a famous poet. He was the first who introduced algebra into geometry. His works contain complete classification of linear, quadratic and cubic equations with positive roots. He also develops a systematic attempt to solve cubic equations. I have only touched the surface to what they have contributed to mathematics. Why did Muslims learn mathematics? Well, there was a practical benefit for the Muslim community. al khwarizmis algebra served as a model in its application for the distribution of inheritance according to Islamic law. Also, with the aid of mathematics, especially in the field of geometry, it enabled Muslims to determine the direction of the Qibla from anywhere in the world. 
so they were able to perform their daily prayer. So there were many practical reasons for the study of mathematics.